Along Interstate 80, heading east, is one of a handful of rest areas in Iowa that are not your ordinary rest stops. Both the interior and the exterior of the rest area have been designed to celebrate Iowa's contribution to the Underground Railroad by combining quilt blocks with the look and feel of a railway depot. This rest stop was designed by artist David Dahlquist, and the building was completed in 2002. Dahlquist's design was based on the book Hidden in Plain View by Jacqueline Tobin and Raymond G. Dobird, which was published in 1999. The book posits that quilts were coded to help slaves and underground station masters communicate. The design of a particular quilt block was thought to tell runaway slaves important information, like whether a person would help them on their journey or to indicate a safe path to take in the area. The book and the idea of quilt codes gained popularity quickly and was shared widely by news outlets and other prominent scientific and history-focused magazines. However, upon much scrutiny, many historians now claim that the Underground Railroad Quilt Code is more folklore than fact. Quilt codes before 1999 were unknown to the African American quilting community, and quilt historians question whether or not some of the patterns were even in use during the height of the Underground Railroad. Even if a quilt code wasn't used, Iowans still provided safety and a means to freedom for many slaves, despite the risks. Cedar County, where the Wilton rest stop is located, had 15 stops on the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. One of the more controversial and well-known abolitionists of the time, John Brown, took his final trip leading slaves to freedom across Iowa. Brown received quite a bit of help from locals who lived in neighboring towns near the Wilton rest stop. The Quaker-established town of Springdale, just 10 miles west of the rest area, provided Brown and his group a two-week stay before they boarded a freight car on a train to Chicago in the nearby town of West Liberty. Brothers Barkley and Edwin Kopak joined Brown's cause, both eventually dying in their quest to free slaves in the United States. Brown also lost his life for the cause. He was tried and hanged for treason on December 2, 1859. He was the first United States citizen to be tried for treason in the country's history. Despite whether the quilt code is based in fact or lore, this Cedar County rest stop is designed beautifully and highlights the efforts of courageous people along the Underground Railroad. Along Interstate 35, near Ames, you'll find the Story City rest area. Artist David Dahlquist, who designed the eastbound Wilton rest area, created beautiful silhouette lamps that mimic the signposts that could be found on the Lincoln Highway, the first national highway which also passes through the area. Each lamp features several important modes of transportation which connected the state's inhabitants to one another, as well as the rest of the country, as the state was developed. When Iowa's lands were opened to settlers in 1838, stagecoaches delivered mail and infrequently passengers across the state. There were two routes that ran twice a week, 
one that went from Burlington to Fort Madison, and another that went from Montrose to St. Francisville, Missouri. Steamboats also played a large role in transportation during this time. In fact, steamboats like the Black Hawk, used in the Cedar River, delivered people and goods between Cedar Rapids and Waterloo, but could really only be run when the river water was high. The state's most reliable steamboat rivers were the Mississippi and Missouri rivers, but these routes of transportation didn't support the flood of pioneers heading west. Stagecoaches and steamboats were replaced by the railway lines, which more efficiently moved people and goods throughout the state. Abraham Lincoln in 1863 officially designated Council Bluffs, Iowa as the easternmost station of the Transcontinental Railroad, which ended in Sacramento, California. While Iowa's rich soil drew people to the area, it also made traveling difficult along its dirt roads. This was especially true with the invention of the automobile. The first automobiles arrived at the Lynn County Fair in 1899 and quickly took hold in Iowa. By 1915, Iowa led the nation in the number of automobiles per capita. Not only did Iowans drive cars, but Iowans also manufactured cars as well. The Story City rest area depicts the many makes and models of cars manufactured in Iowa at the beginning of the century in the terracotta blocks banding the building. Many do not know that Iowa's attention to transportation and road construction have created significant advances to roadway design across the country. In fact, Iowa was one of the two states to begin making hard surface roads with cement. Thanks to Iowa State University, not far from this rest area, and the Transportation Commission it supported until the 1970s, Iowa was the state that developed many important road safety measures, such as the no passing sign, highway mileage markers, and even the line that divides the right-hand side of traffic from the left-hand side of traffic. In addition to its lovely artwork, this rest stop has its own system of walking trails. Completed in 2009, this unique rest stop tells us a story with its nod to history and its dazzling lights. A few minutes south of Minnesota's border on I-35 is the top of Iowa rest area in Northwood, Iowa, it stands out from many of Iowa's rest areas because it is marked by the iconic two-story red barn. Rest areas were constructed as part of Iowa's interstate project in the 70s as a safety measure. Northwood was the first area rest stop to receive a renovation and begin the DOT's decade-long project to update the aging rest areas of the state. As part of the renovation plan, 19 rest stops have been renovated. With each of these renovations, a part of Iowa's history has been represented. Northwood was completed in 1998, and in addition to being the first rest area renovated, it was completed with both private and state funds. Additionally, the rest area contains a gift shop and the Cow Pie Cafe, specializing in what else? but pies. Volunteers staff the Welcome Center and brochures line the walls allowing travelers to learn about the various places to visit in Iowa. The Northwood rest stop shows off plaques celebrating some of the state's heroes and innovators. When first entering the building, you can read about Norman Borlaug, 
the 1970s Nobel Peace Prize recipient whose work helped to increase wheat production around the world. It was his farming techniques which are credited with saving nearly a billion lives from starvation and starting the Green Movement. Another Northern Iowa hero whose work is celebrated at the Northwood Rest Area is a suffragette, Carrie Lane Chapman Catt. Catt most notably created a survey in 1886 which showed that all but 10 women in Mason City wanted enfranchisement. In 1900, she became president of the National Women's Suffrage Association. Once women gained the right to vote, Kat founded the League of Women Voters. There are several other mentions of Iowa's heroes throughout Northwood's grounds, including those celebrated by the Blue Star War Memorial. These war memorials began in 1944 to honor the veterans of World War II and were later adopted by the National Council of State Garden Clubs. Blue Star Memorials can be found along thousands of highways within the United States. Although the Top of Iowa Welcome Center is not as idyllic as our other two rest stops, it has unique things offered nowhere else. Its atmosphere is inviting and homey. Regulars stop in to visit and the volunteers take pride in being the first to welcome visitors to Iowa. This truly is an icon of our state.